So to get rid of the gold stones, the doctors may suggest uh, oral bile salt therapy or sometimes they break the stones through uh, tripsy or the lithotripsy and sometimes the surgical removal is an option for symptomatic patients. Sometimes these gold stones are so small that you may remain asymptomatic and a uh, doctor may say wait and watch and let's see what happens. Otherwise, as needed, uh, these different options can be considered, okay? So, let's move on in this uh, presentation series. I will have another file that I will open to go over and we'll continue. So, So we are moving from the mouth to the anus and now let's take a look at the pancreas. So pancreas, we reviewed different slides, one more slide to have a better understanding, your liver, gallbladder, from esophagus, stomach and here is your pancreas. Uh, the duodenum is the beginning and downwards as we reviewed the small intestine and the uh, colon or the large intestine. So let's focus on the pancreas for now. This is another view of pancreas. Uh, different literature would describe differently. In the pancreas you have the tail, you have the body, you have the head. Uh, these are the different ducts <coughs> that we have been talking about. Uh, pancreatic duct, common bile duct, of course, if you go above, uh, the liver would uh, have a left hepatic and right hepatic tract. But for now, let's focus on the pancreas. So, what could go wrong with the pancreas? There could be inflammation, right? So, any ITs would mean inflammation. So, you could have pancreatic inflammation of the uh, pancreas. Pancreatitis would be the inflammation of the pancreas. So what happens, these enzymes that actually tries to help digest the food, sometimes these digestive enzyme, enzymes, they attack on the pancreatic tissue and as a result, sometimes they may damage the pancreatic gland. In majority of the cases, the cause is unknown, but it is believed that this inflammation can happen uh, due to the alcohol, the gold stones that we just reviewed, abdominal trauma, any injuries or drugs. Okay. Now, when it comes to the inflammation of pancreatitis <coughs> or the pancreas, it could be acute or it could be chronic. <coughs> acute can happen in discrete episodes or attacks followed by recovery. Whereas Chronic pancreatitis is more concerning and why is that? Because it happens as a result of obstruction to the drainage of pancreatic enzymes via pancreatic ducts into the duodenum. So that can be concerning. So that happens and uh, it leads to the chronic inflammation. So the treatment is always starts with the uh, diet, drugs or the medications and if needed uh, surgery may be required. So I have got a couple of slides to show you. Uh, look at the normal pancreas and look at the inflammation. There is another thing when it goes to the pancreas that could go wrong or the one more disorder and that would be labeled as pancreatic case. What that means is, it usually happens after the pancreatitis and that is what, it is a localized pause filled cavity. That's why it's called X case in the pancreas. Okay. Um, they are difficult to diagnose uh, because the way pancreas is located in our body, sometimes it may not be that visible and may remain asymptomatic. So, uh, if necessary, then of course the surgical drainage may be required. When it 
comes to pancreas, another disorder that you may encounter is called pancreatic cyst. Now there could be a pseudo cyst, <coughs> or not the actual cyst, but something like a cyst. Then you could have a benign cyst, malignant or cancerous cyst that may turn into tumor cancer. So they are the collection of fluid within the head, body, or bed. It can be it can happen anywhere in your pancreas, okay? And as I said, it could have a, a different kinds from benign to malignant. Uh, this is one more way to look at the pancreas with a variety of cysts. So what are the risk factors about this? So it is believed that heavy alcohol use and the gallstones are the risk factors for the inflammation of pancreas. Inflammation of the pancreas per se is a risk factor for what we call pseudocyst. And abdominal injury is also a risk factor for the pseudocyst. So enough on the pancreas. One of the beauty that God has created, you know, we are in the middle of the Thanksgiving weekend. We go out, do a lot of shopping just for the sake of fun and we see kids and adults and seniors they carry multiple bags and in different bags shopping bags <coughs> we see that small or big items are all bundled together right just like that God has created such a beautiful body that what we have when we talk about the intestines what is called mesentery Mesentery holds all these things together. So it is a fold of membrane that attaches the intestine to the abdominal wall and holds it in the place. So nothing falls apart, everything stays together. Let me show you a couple of pictures along those lines. So look at the mesentery, how it holds the small intestine, everything is tied together, right? Another slide of mesentery. So when we look at the intestine, what could go wrong? Sometimes it can twist upon itself, right? And when that happens, what needs to be done? Of course, you are correct, surgery. So see, see this is the picture of Volvulus. So the intestine could twist upon itself, and if that happens, then of course the surgery would be required. Let's talk about a few other disorders. What else could go wrong in the intestine? So there is something called divert diverticula. They are like a, a side pockets, or they are like the out pouching in the intestinal wall and per se they are not bothersome when there is one it's called diverticula when there are multiple diverticula it is labeled as diverticulosis and the common locations for the diverticulosis are the sigmoid colon the s cell colon and the duodenum okay if Inflammation occurs, then of course, as we know, itis, diverticulitis. That is what is called inflammation of diverticula. If that happens, then probably surgery may be required. So let me show you the picture of, see this is diverticula, this is inflammation, so diverticulitis, diverticulosis, when you have more than one, Another slide like that. It's not as bad sometimes to make us understand the, the visual effects are given, but it's not as bad as it may look on surface. What else could go wrong with our intestine? Sometimes we have a normal intestine, sometimes there is a portion that is diseased due to various other reasons, and doctor may have to do the surgery, right? to remove the impaired or the deceased 
portion of the colon or the intestine. If that continues to happen, ultimately it may lead to what we call short bowel syndrome. Short bowel syndrome can happen. Okay? And primarily that happens because of the malabsorption disorder. Because the small intestine is not functioning properly. It could lead to diarrhea, dehydration. Uh, you may end up having a uh, weight loss, of course. There are various other symptoms ranging from heartburn to lactose intolerance to uh, false smelling stool. What can go wrong as far as the complications due to the sore bowel syndrome? It may lead to the anemia or the kidney stone. And it, it is believed that most cases are due to the surgical removal of the large portion of the small intestine. And this could happen due to some congenital abnormalities in the children and or it may happen due to the Crohn's disease that we will take a close look at the Crohn's disease very soon. Uh, what are the other causes that can go happen and go wrong? Any other abnormalities, it could happen because of congenital, because of Crohn's, because of malignancies, uh, because of uh, inflammation, infections. Uh, the, the doctor may treat with a diet, if needed medication, then if needed, of course, surgery. Take a look at the picture of the sore bowel syndrome. See, this is your typical liver. Uh, small intestine, colon or the big, large intestine and one after the other with multiple surgeries it may lead to short gut syndrome. What else could go wrong with our intestine? Something that you frequently hear or encounter and the underwriters uh, reviewing the medical records we will see in the medical records is called irritable bowel syndrome as the name indicates it's a group of diarrhea and constipation lower abdominal pain uh, there are no clear data but it is believed to be related to stress and tension it is also known as spastic colon or mucus colon the good part about the irritable bowel syndrome is it's not that concerning, there is no pathological less lesions found in the intestines. Remember, this is irritable bowel syndrome. There is a difference between irritable bowel syndrome and what we call inflammatory bowel disease. Our presentation series started with me talking about ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are labeled as inflammatory bowel disease disease. So there are many similarities between the two, however there are few differences between the two as well. So we will take a close look at the CD or the Crohn's disease and UC or ulcerative colitis. They both are chronic conditions, cause is unfortunately unknown but there are various reasons that we will get into the details. Statistically speaking, Ulcerative colitis is one to three times more common than Crohn's disease. Okay, so remember this slide from mouth to anus. Let me quickly give you an overview of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. They both are inflammatory bowel disease, right? Inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Some overview of difference between the two from mouth to anus, that's the GI tract that we have been looking at multiple times. In Crohn's disease, what happens? The inflammation can happen in any part of the GI tract. That is called Crohn's disease. So it can happen anywhere, technically speaking, from mouth to anus. Whereas in ulcerative colitis, as the name suggests, it is confined to the large intestine. The big difference. That's number one. Number two, Crohn's disease 
generally happens in the small intestine but technically it can happen from mouth to anus when it generally happens in the small intestine it will impact all layers of the small intestine whereas ulcerative colitis happens in large intestines from ascending to transverse to descending to sigmoid to anus right so it will impact only the innermost layer of the large intestine that is another big difference between the two the third big difference between the two is ulcerative colitis it can range from sigmoid colon okay that is called proctitis so it just starts from here and it is just at the sigmoid colon okay it may continue up to what you call lap colitis if it continues further then it is considered extensive colitis depending upon what literature they are labeling and if it goes throughout the large intestine it is called pancolitis right and 